Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at Film Ferrania's P30 Alpha. P30 Alpha is an 80 ISO black and white motion picture film made in 1958, popularized by Italian directors in the 1960s, and adapted to 35mm for still photography. P30 was recently reintroduced in 2017 through a Kickstarter. It was well received and got its funding. I purchased a couple rolls way back in January 2018, just after it was released to the public. The first roll, I didn't follow their best practices, but I'm glad I looked at their website for the second roll because this film needs to be treated in a very specific way. First off, you wanna make sure that you're using a mechanical camera. A motor winder can rip the film. Also, there's no DX codes. Because of the film's fragile nature, you want to develop by hand rather than letting a lab process it. Again, a machine can rip the film. And the big one for me though was the developing time. I was originally going to use Rodinol, but best practices called for a 1 to 100 delusion at uh, an hour for a semi-stand development. So I settled on HC 110 delusion H. Uh, which was still 12 minutes. For a complete list of best practices for this film, I'll leave a link in the description below. To test my film, I went to the village of Acme, Alberta. Let's take a look. I'm out here in Acme, Alberta. Uh, the only reason why I'm here is because of the name. I thought it was great. And I have with me Ferrania P30 film. It is an ISO 80 film. It's also apparently pretty fussy. Um, and I'll get more to that later. But uh, I'm shooting this Ferrania film with my Nikon FE. You might remember I shot with it a few weeks ago. The reason why I'm not shooting with my main 35mm Pentax ME Super is I think I finally realized why I'm overexposing my shots on that camera. And I think the reason for that is I don't think the camera goes below f5.6. So when I look down the barrel of the lens, I noticed that after 5.6, it stopped closing down. And the more I investigated, the more issues I had. So long story short, I'm shooting with the Nikon FE and a 50mm 1.8. I'm about 25 shots in and, you know, I've circled the town and I even stopped into a luncheonette slash ice cream shop and had myself a Reuben. It was fantastic. So my plan now is to head to Iracana and finish off the roll there and on my way home. Well, I made it to Iracana, no problem. Um, not that I know why there would be a problem, but it's just the thing to say. Um, it's funny. I've been to so many small towns over the last, uh, two months that I couldn't even picture what Iracana looked like. So it was only when I got to the main strip that it was like, oh yeah, this is where I shot, um, my first impressions on the Mamiya M645. <laughs> That was actually a lot quicker than I thought. I ended up just walking down the main street over to the Iracana Hotel. I thought it was abandoned, um, but I encountered the owner slash um, resident. Hi. Oh, this is yours? It's nice. Well, I mean, it could be in better shape, but... Anyway, he says that, uh, oh, first he asks what I'm doing, and then, you know, I tell him I like shooting abandoned buildings, and then he says, well, it's not abandoned, I live in there, and I said, well, I like shooting old buildings, and then he was sort of on his way. Uh, I like taking pictures of abandoned buildings. Oh. <clears throat> well, I like taking pictures of old buildings. Take care. Um, 
And I know people are really split about how they react to being asked, why are you photographing? Uh, but I find if you're in a small town and you've lived in a small town for a while and there's some unusual activity going on and you're used to approaching people and saying hi anyway, there's really no problem in asking, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I, by the way, I live in here. So he seems pretty polite but reserved. What I actually did is I left my business card under his windshield wiper and, uh, you know, I probably won't hear from him, but at least I'm being open and I'm being direct. So with all of that out of the way, here are today's highlights. So one of the things that popped up during my development are these halo marks. And the last time it happened, I was using HC-110. When I switched to Rodinol, it all went away. And it only came back when I used HC-110 again. And I think it's due to inadequate stirring. Um, I'm not mixing it for long enough. Uh, that's part of the reason why I switched to Rodinol is because it's more of a liquid and less of a goop. At any rate, um, I'm going to get one of those magnetic stirring doodads and that should solve the issue uh, next time I use Kodak's um, developer. More importantly though, what did I think of the film? I have to say, I really love the way the photos turned out. Those crushed blacks are amazing. At the same time, I love that gentle slope from the highlights to the midtones, and then that kamikaze dive from the shadows to the blacks really amazing. The film does have latitude. You can see from my histogram that there's actually quite a bit to work with. It's not the gentle slope of HP5 though, it's a bit more of a bumpy ride. The main issues I had with the film were with the handling. Uh, first, when I was transferring the film to the tank, I noticed that it just unraveled right away. Most films have this tight curl, so when you're transferring or re-spooling the film from one hand to the other, it'll just tighten right up uh, when it goes from one hand to the other. But when you open up a canister of P30, it comes out like a, you know, like a prank, you know, like, a, like those snakes out of the can. It, it just wants to go everywhere and completely straighten out. Um, I wish I could explain it better, but of course, all this happens in the dark. Um, you really got to hold on to it while you're transferring it onto your film spool. If you have one of those devices that just pulls the film from the canister, I actually recommend that. I also got a couple of gnarly Newton rings. Yes, I have Newton glass. No, it's not worth my time. My third and final issue was that the film was actually a little dirty. Now, when you get white dust on your negative, uh, that means it happened after development. But when it's black dust, that means it happened before development and I had a couple of black specks on my film, and it is possible that it was me, but this isn't something that I encounter in my own work very often. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they shut down production. Did I forget to mention that? Yeah, the factory's closed. When I went back to the online shop recently to buy a couple more rolls or see what else they've got, uh, I was met with broken links. And when I did some research, I found a blog that basically said that their factory had been closed due to reasons large and small uh, way back in February of 2018, just one month after I bought my film. 
Jumping forward to now, early June 2019, they are still closed, but plan a reboot very soon. I'm not really here to comment on why they shut down, or if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I just wanted to let you know in case you went running off looking for roles and wondered why you couldn't find any. I really wish them all the best, and when they relaunch, I will be on their shop looking to buy more roles of P30 Alpha. I really enjoyed this film. Well, that's all for now. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And normally this would be the part where I promote my Patreon page, but uh, this month of June, I'd like to try something a little bit different. For the month of June 2019, I will be riding to fight kids cancer and ask you to direct any generosity to my Great Cycle Challenge funding page. Every week in Canada, 27 kids are diagnosed with cancer, and though I have no personal association with this tragic illness, I want to do my part. My goal is to ride 100 kilometers during the month of June and raise $500. So far I've ridden 28 kilometers and raised 140. If that's too deep for you, I also make funny memes on Instagram. And until next time, stay classic.